Hello from the video today. I'm working on a portrait of the characters from the podcast Hello from the Magic Tavern. It's one of my new favorite podcasts. My friend Kat recommended it to me. And I'm taking some inspiration from... It's funny because at the same time that I was getting into this podcast or I was being told to, to listen to this podcast from my friend, we went to the Storm Crow Tavern in Vancouver and that location is a big inspiration for the tavern that I'm painting here and right now I'm just working on the background I'm building up the background and later on I'm going to flesh out the main characters in the foreground and they're gonna be outlined in a black outline but I'm leaving the background a bit more uh, less defined and that way we have the main characters are going to come forward a lot more and they're going to stand out more against this background but I'm focusing on I, I've looked up a lot of references and when you're working on something like this that's sort of a fantastic uh, fantasy or just an imaginary space make sure you look up a lot of references for them and that way you can have an idea of where your light sources are coming from what kind of colors and textures you're going to have in your imaginary scene and I was looking at images of the Storm Crow Tavern and I was looking at some other fan art of uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern and I saw a lot of purples and browns and some beige colors as well some tan colors I started adding in a little bit of blue over on the right hand side there because I know that the character Usador the blue is going to have to be blue so um, I've talked about it in other videos if you're going to have another color that is outside of this palette of purple and browns and tans and things make sure you incorporate a color in around the rest of the image so that it doesn't stand out too much against the rest of the image that you're working on. These bricks here in the foreground, because it's more of the light is coming from the back of the image and the foreground is a bit darker, which also brings it more forward. So those bricks that are on the right hand, the lower right hand side there, those are a lot darker because there isn't as much light being cast on them. I'm just adding in some detail of the grate that's above the bar at the back there. That's actually uh, an actual thing that exists in the Storm Crow Tavern. And there is a Storm Crow Ale House over in Vancouver as well, which I haven't been to yet, but I heard that's also really cool. The thing about this particular painting is that there's just a lot of little details, but at the same time, it's not so overwhelming with all the details. The bricks, for example, I've talked about in another video with something like bricks, you don't need to draw in every single brick, although I did draw in every single little <laughs> grate in the background there. There are exceptions to the rules sometimes in art, which I think is why people find art frustrating is because there's all these rules and then they're often being broken as well.
So now I'm starting to add in detail to the characters in the foreground. And I'm starting just with flat colors because I'm still trying to figure out exactly the lighting. And it's okay to kind of start off with just a, a solid color just so you know where you're going to go from there. It's easier to build up from a flat, I find. So a flat color in this case is just a solid color that we're choosing as sort of a neutral. It can be the lightest color or it can be sort of a middle tone color between your darkest and your lightest color. I think I ended up, these are, these are probably going to be the lightest color of the shirt or the cloak that Usador is wearing. And then as we go in, just adding a bit of detail to the objects in the room, the chairs. And take into consideration with your darker colors like under the table and on the table itself that you never just want to do a, a flat dark brown or a flat black. Try and throw in some other colors, throw in purples and blues and the other colors that are in the room there as well. Purple and blue being a bit of a darker color tends to work better with black to kind of evoke that richness. But a solid black or a solid brown is not going to have as much visual texture to it. It just it looks too unnatural. Starting to add some shadow into the faces. And later on I add a bit more shadow. This is okay to kind of start adding shadow if you feel like you go in and you put in some shadow into the characters. I'm a little timid with it, admittedly. I think that as I continue here, I start to get a little bit bolder with my contrast because there is such strong lighting and contrast in this room. If you want to have that kind of dramatic lighting, you really have to bring in those darker colors to emphasize your highlights and your shadows. So now I'm starting to darken up his sleeve there. And Arnie as well, his shirt is uh, was needing to be darkened up. Starting to add my details into each of the characters. The microphone is actually the microphone I'm talking into right now. I used it as a reference model. And I know a lot of people don't like that particular model of... Uh, of microphones. It's on the cheaper end of <laughs> of the microphone options. So here's where I was talking about. I'm starting to add in a bit more of that darker shadow and I'm mixing a bit for, for the skin tones for the characters. I'm adding, I'm sort of mixing skin tone with purple because there's so much purple in this room. More purple being added into the objects. Just darkening up the flower down there as well. Because she's more in the shadows. It's better to keep her a bit darker there. But as I go in and add a bit of the outlining, she stands, starts to stand out a bit more. So just starting to bring up, again, bringing up more and more detail of those foreground characters. And this is something, even after you've, after you've done the outline, I believe I might even go back in and darken it up a bit more, just to bring in more contrast. And I have the little Hello from the Magic Tavern logo on the laptop.
Usador is either casting a spell to make a tiny horse with a top hat, or he's chanting out all of his names. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Comment below and let me know what you think Usador is doing in this scene. I'm adding in a bit of those highlights now into the tree just to kind of bring it up a bit. Just some lighter browns and darkening up the table too because there's a bit more... I realized it needed to have more shadow cast on it from the individual people. And that's our video everyone. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye